Union Pacific is one of America's largest railroads, dominating a vast portion of the West with over 30,000 miles of track. Its headquarters is in Omaha, Nebraska. With the acquisition of Chicago and Northwestern in 1995, its network stretched east from Omaha to Chicago. As a result of the merger, today UP maintains a significant amount of trackage in the state of Iowa. In this video, we'll be trackside on Union Pacific in the middle of Iowa, primarily across the double track main line cutting through the center of the state. This busy line is known as the Overland Route, with reference to the old streamliner of the same name that once traveled across here on its way to San Francisco. The majority of the Overland Route in Iowa is made up of two UP subdivisions, the Boone subdivision running between Missouri Valley and Boone, and the Clinton subdivision between Boone and Clinton. Intermodal and coal trains make up most of the traffic seen through here, along with trains hauling agricultural commodities, perishables, and various other products found on mixed freights. Not only will we see freight trains on UP's Overland Route in Iowa, but also many scenes of special passenger trains run in the summer of 2019. These trains received international attention as they were some of the first operated by Union Pacific's restored Big Boy Steam Locomotive number 4014. There were originally 25 Big Boy locomotives manufactured for Union Pacific by the American Locomotive Company in 1941 and 44, and as their name suggests, are massive in size, featuring four pilot wheels, two sets of eight driving wheels, and four trailing wheels. As an articulated locomotive, it's essentially two steam engines underneath one boiler, providing a huge amount of power to pull very long trains. The big boys were first tested and operated over the Wasatch Range of the Rocky Mountains in Utah and Wyoming. Later, the engines were assigned to pull trains over the steep grades on Sherman Hill in southeastern Wyoming between Cheyenne and Laramie. Of course, diesel locomotives would eventually displace steam, and the big boys made their final runs in 1959. Most were scrapped, but eight locomotives were donated to museums and parks for display across the U.S. One of these was 4014, residing at the Rail Giants Train Museum in Pomona, California until 2013, when it was moved to Cheyenne to be restored to operation by Union Pacific. Many believed that a big boy would never run again, and those that wished one would had their dreams come true when 4014's restoration was completed in 2019, just in time for UP's 150th anniversary celebration of the completion of America's first transcontinental railroad. After attending a special ceremony in Utah, 4014 took off on a nationwide tour through the summer and fall, logging thousands of miles across the UP system. 4014 departed Cheyenne in early July 2019, making its way east through Nebraska. After a couple days on display in Omaha, the big boy crossed into Iowa on July 15th. On this stretch of the journey, UP offered excursion tickets for those wishing to ride the train between Omaha and Boone, and many more passenger cars were added to the train to accommodate these guests. We begin our look at 4014's travels in Denison, one of the first major towns along the Overland Route east of Nebraska. The train is approaching town to make a brief stop before continuing east.
While 4014 is stopped in Denison, we jump ahead a few miles to the edge of Vail, Iowa. We'll see a pair of westbound freight trains before the big boys arrival. The swarm of train enthusiasts following the big boy has slowed traffic on nearby Highway 30 to a crawl for miles through the Iowa countryside. It's going to take a while for us to get ahead of the train again, so let's take a break from the big boy action for some more freight trains in this area. In April 2018, we're in the small town of Scranton, Iowa on UP's Boone subdivision as we see two westbound freight trains at the Main Street crossing directly south of downtown.
an auto rack train travels west through Scranton. This train is led by a renumbered SD9043 Mack diesel, which even in 2018 was an unusual sight on Union Pacific, as by this time the majority of these units were put in storage or sold to other railroads. Returning to summer 2019, we've clawed through the traffic to get ahead of the big boy once again on the east side of Grand Junction. Many other rail fans have gathered in the adjacent Lion Tree Park to see the train pass. This is one of many segments of the Overland Route followed closely by original alignments of the Lincoln Highway across Iowa. Are we in anybody's way? Oh, everybody's. The big boy has arrived in Boone, with excursion passengers leaving the train as it stopped near downtown. Now, 4014 is ready to back the train west over a few crossings, while UP crews prepare to split the train consist. Some of the cars will continue on with 4014, while the others used for the excursion will return to Council Bluffs.
An SD-70M locomotive will assist crews in pulling the Council Bluffs-bound cars away from the big boys' train. Forty fourteen will spend the night in Union Pacific's Boone Yard before continuing on its way July 16th. In the meantime, let's see some freight trains in Boone as we turn back the clock to autumn 2016. Story Street is a busy crossing on the eastern end of UP's Boone subdivision just north of downtown and only a few blocks away from the Boone Rail Yard and Division Point with the Clinton subdivision taking the Overland route farther east. Approaching is a long mixed freight that will make a prolonged stop across Story Street as it enters the yard. Once reaching the yard, this train will eventually be split into two different consists.
With the mixed freight stopped, other trains continue through Boone on Main 1. Mixed freight has finally made it into the yard and clears the line for other eastbound movements. Before leaving town, we see one of these, an eastbound grain train.
We are east of Boone, near Jordan, Iowa, on the Clinton subdivision, as we rejoin the big boys train as it prepares to depart on July 16th, 2019. Before it arrives, we see an eastbound intermodal with a cut of refrigerated boxcars on the end. Now 4014 makes its way past us with its shortened passenger consists that would stay the same for the remainder of its trip. Also added in Boone was a different diesel support locomotive, a newer tier 4 variant of the SD70 ACE. The big boy continues east until Nevada, Iowa, where it will leave the Overland route to head north. A connecting track allows trains to transfer onto the Spine Line, running north and south through the center of Iowa. This former Rock Island main line between the Twin Cities and Kansas City was purchased by Chicago and Northwestern after the Rock Island declared bankruptcy in 1980. In Iowa, the Spine Line mainly comprises of the UP's Trenton subdivision between Kansas City and Des Moines and the Mason City subdivision between Des Moines and Mason City. After making a stop in Nevada on the old Rock Island, 4014 begins its northbound trip on the Mason City subdivision. We caught up with the train as it makes an appearance through Garden City, Iowa. Forty fourteen continues on to its overnight stop in Mason City and will work its way even farther north into Minnesota to St. Paul and Duluth, then travel east to Chicago.
The train won't return to Iowa for a couple weeks, so in the meantime, let's continue east along the Overland Route for some other Union Pacific action from the past several years. A BNSF coal train is seen traveling quickly through Tama in March 2019. With river floods shutting down BNSF's main line in southern Iowa, UP hosted BNSF detour trains between Omaha and Chicago. BNSF also received a waiver to operate their own diesels across the Overland Route. At the time, it was very unusual to see another railroad's locomotives leading a train through here, as Union Pacific still required leaders to be equipped with cab signaling, a holdover from the Chicago and Northwestern days. Today, with the full implementation of positive train control, UP has discontinued the use of cab signals, and foreign units on the front of trains on this line is much more common. In November 2018, we see two more trains in Tama. We are now positioned one more crossing over at McClellan Street as a slow eastbound intermodal approaches. Union Pacific's locomotive 1943 wears a special paint scheme honoring the United States Armed Forces. A fitting sight on Veterans Day 2018, our next train features this unique engine as it powers a short passenger train west through Tama.
Now we've continued east along the Clinton sub, making a brief stop in Luzerne, Iowa in summer 2014. This eastbound freight is led by a very common SD-70M diesel, but also features some more unusual power. Union Pacific 9900, first of a series of remanufactured locomotives known as the SD-59MX. At this time, the unit still had an experimental blister section in the middle. East of Luzerne, we see two more trains, a westbound grain train followed by an eastbound mixed freight at 17th Avenue.
In Blairstown, a few more miles east, an empty coal train speeds through Locust Street near the business district. Ending the day's action in Blairstown is an eastbound UP freight, nicknamed the Salad Shooter, a train of refrigerated boxcars filled with perishables bound for the East Coast. There's plenty of power up front for today's short train. We return to March 2019 to continue east along the line. In Norway, an intermodal train is tied down on Main 2, with westbound movements continuing through on Main 1. Like Blairstown, Norway is another one of the many small Iowa towns along UP's main line, with old grain elevators still standing along the tracks.
On the other side of Cedar Rapids, a more modern grain elevator dominates the scene as a westbound mixed freight approaches in Clarence, Iowa. This elevator is part of a large feed mill operated by Lando Lakes Purina. The sun begins to set as we wait for our last train today in Calamus, Iowa. This train is Amtrak's California Zephyr, detouring over Union Pacific due to its normal route across the state shutting down with the early floods of 2019. The Overland route in Iowa hasn't seen a regularly scheduled passenger service since the 1970s, but it's still a common detour route for Amtrak when portions of BNSF's Ottumwa and Creston subdivisions go underwater. To provide cab signaling for this train, a UP AC 4400CW leads the way. Also of interest in tonight's consist is Amtrak's Phase 2 Heritage Locomotive 130. We've crossed the majority of Iowa on Union Pacific's Overland Route and have made it to Clinton along the Mississippi River. It's July 30th, 2019, and the Big Boy 4014 is making its way west, back into Iowa after completing its loop to St. Paul, Duluth, and Chicago. A crowd has gathered along the tracks near UP's Swing Bridge to see 4014 enter Iowa, shortly before its Clinton whistle stop. But before it arrives, we see a northbound Canadian Pacific local freight. 
Trains on CP's Davenport subdivision must cross the Union Pacific mains as they travel on the former Milwaukee Road line along the Iowa side of the Mississippi River between Davenport and the Twin Cities. The big boy approaches crossing the Mississippi River. This is the last stretch of UP's Geneva subdivision from Chicago, becoming the Clinton sub west of here towards Boone. After 4014's stop in Clinton, we caught up with the train at two more locations in eastern Iowa, 
first on the edge of Grand Mound, and later back at the Lando Lakes Purina Elevator in Clarence. Like our earlier trip on the west side of Iowa, rail fans pacing 4014 on US Highway 30 created backed up traffic for miles, making a chase on this two lane road extremely difficult. We were unable to get ahead of the train again today as the big boy made an overnight stop in Cedar Rapids at Union Pacific's Beverly Yard. The next day, July 31st, we are back along the tracks in Norway, the first of many locations we'll see the big boy today as the train begins its run to Des Moines.
Thank you. Forty Fort team prepares for another whistle stop as the special arrives in Marshalltown, Iowa. We're west of Marshalltown, overlooking the Union Pacific Main Line and its bridge across Lynn Creek as an eastbound intermodal train heads through before the big boy. Our next stop as 4014 continues west is Colo, Iowa as the railroad crosses over U.S. Highway 65. Directly behind us is the famous Colo intersection of the original Lincoln Highway and the north-south running Jefferson Highway.
After Colo, the big boy finds itself back in Nevada, Iowa, and ready to make another turn onto UP's spine line. This time, the train heads south on the spine line towards Des Moines. We are almost to the end of our chase as the train approaches Elkhart for a brief stop. What started out as a sunny day has eventually given way to clouds, and rain is falling as the big boy makes its arrival in Des Moines. But the rain won't put a damper on our final view of the special as 4014 passes underneath Interstate 235 towering overhead and then across an overpass above University Avenue. The big boy and its train will spend August 1st on display in Des Moines and then begin the trip home to Cheyenne. In the years that have followed, 4014 has logged thousands more miles with special trains across the western U.S. and has made it back to the Midwest twice, most recently a trip to the Omaha Council Bluffs area for the 2023 College World Series. There's no doubt that wherever this locomotive goes, there will always be a huge following of fans from across the country and the world lining the tracks to catch a glimpse of the only operating example of the mighty 4884 Big Boy. This is Bobby Harvey. I'd like to thank you for watching this collection of Union Pacific trains from Iowa. I'll see you next time.